Hello, and welcome to the East Africa Business Podcast. I'm Sam Ploy, and I'm here on the continent to learn about the emerging business scene. I'll be interviewing startups, investors, and organizations who are all playing their part in helping the region develop and grow. And in doing this podcast, I'll be sharing with you the things I learned along the way. Most people like to be entertained. Soon after getting a smartphone, people in East Africa start to seek out entertainment in the form of videos on YouTube, not even considering the idea of traditional television, which has to stick to a schedule and requires being sat at home. Internationally, the dominant on-demand video service is Netflix, though the content isn't very relatable to the African market. Victor and I discuss Tango TV, the Netflix alternative starting in Tanzania. We discuss the current media distribution model in Tanzania, considerations of building a video streaming app in East Africa, and why the local market won't watch Game of Thrones even if it is in Swahili. It's a very interesting conversation that we have, and so I hope you enjoy. Cool, so I'm here with Victor from Tango TV. Victor, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks, Sam. So just to get started, can you tell us a bit about you and a bit about Tango TV? Oh uh, yeah, so I, I'm Victor Joseph, and uh, I am uh, founder and current CEO of Tango TV. Yeah, so Tango TV, we, uh, it's basically a media streaming service for local content. So it's like a video on demand platform. Uh, for Swahili uh, content, uh, so it's having Swahili content, but we're looking to have you know more local content uh, for for African. So think of us like a Netflix, but for local African content. So that's what we are aiming for. Awesome. Okay, and how long have you been going? Uh, yeah, so we 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 worked uh, for a while trying to build the technology, and we launched our app uh, around March, April this year. Uh, so just a mobile app. People can stream and watch films on the mobile app, and then we have we also built like uh, a streaming box for the TV. Right? So we, we just uh, saw a few of those as a test run, and we're looking to bring them to market. Right. So Netflix for local African TV. Yeah, basically. Okay. So local African. TV. All right. Um, so how many customers do you have? Uh, so we have uh, close to thirty thousand registered users. Yeah, and uh, we get like up to 5,000 uh, monthly active, uh, monthly active users. Huh? What, what's your most popular show or content? Uh, yes, we have a, a lot of common films. Uh, so we, we have a lot of films currently. So we have a lot of local comedy films that people love uh, a lot. So we have, they prefer comedy, we have a lot of you know, drama, you know, uh, you know, horror, but people prefer a lot of these uh, comedy films. I see. Um, so where, where did the sort of idea come from? What's the, can you talk me through how you got into the position of, of starting Tango TV? Well, yeah, so the, I, I got the idea back when uh, I was in college, actually. So we, I was just talking to my friend and uh, we were talking on the issues with the distribution of African films. Now, Swahili films are very popular. Here. People totally love them. Uh, the problem is that uh, distributing the content of uh, it's it's basically just a broken system because the the filmmakers they don't love the current distribution model very much because uh, piracy is just <laughs> prevalent and then uh, DVDs are just you know, they're just becoming obsolete. People on their smartphones and their laptops they don't like DVDs anymore. They want to access their content on demand. So this is a couple of years back. I was just thinking and I figured uh, why don't you don't, don't you just distribute this content over the internet? And the internet is not, it's still not very, not very good, but in my thinking was that it's just going to get better. So if you get, if you just start and then grow with it, as you can see now, smartphones are becoming, everybody has a smartphone, it's just becoming, uh, the penetration is increasing, internet penetration, so we see that a lot of people are just going to want to access their content online. People don't spend their time watching, you know, linear TV very much in the past. So you can see the younger generation, they're just going to forget the whole concept of sitting in a sitting room and watching uh, TV in, in the linear. They want their YouTube, they on WhatsApp, they just access, access whatever they want, whatever they want. So if you get, uh, they're going to want to access films and shows just the same way. Okay. So... Let's talk about uh, one of these comedy films. So, what's the typical length of the film? Yeah, so the, typically it's uh, one and a half hours uh, to one hour. <laughs> so that's the typical length okay. of the film. Yeah. 
And so, am I am I streaming it or am I downloading it to keep? Uh, you you're streaming it. You're streaming it. We are going to test. We we tested uh, offline downloads for a while, and we got a few complaints. People are saying they don't have enough space in their phones to download and install it. And then we uh, we just left it to streaming, and people you know, they can stream a bit of it and then finish it up later maybe. Yeah, but uh, we think streaming is just better if if you have a good connection. If not, then we'll have the uh, offline the download feature. You can just store it on the fly and then watch it. In, in sort of rough numbers, how many megabytes is would it? Would it take to, to uh, sort of screen? <laughs> okay, so it's the present it typical film. We, we do adaptive uh, different streaming, so depending on your connection speed, you may get a different quality of the film. It shifts, kind of like what YouTube does. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, a typical film, if you get like really good quality of it all along, it, it'll be uh, 200 megabytes, yeah. 150 megabytes. So, and do, you, do most people have data packages where they can kind of that? Well, yeah, yeah. Um, if you ask a typical person, they would say uh, they have, you know, they usually have a data bundle to like charts, you know, water, Google, or whatever. But then if they want to watch a video on YouTube or watch a film on YouTube, then they know that uh, I'm going to spend this 500 shillings to get a bundle so I can watch YouTube today. Yeah, so they actually uh, do that. It's, it's like a conscious system yeah, yeah, to say, yeah. I'm going to get X amount more. So that I can watch this particular show, or I can watch this particular show. And so thing. they're really feeling the marginal cost. They're really sort of saying, okay, I'm expending this amount to get this in return. It's really sort of like transaction. Uh, yeah, yeah, so they know that. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, look at YouTube. YouTube is huge now. I mean, not that it's huge, as, but. People watch a lot of YouTube videos, so music videos, uh, a lot of uh, other comedy videos. Yeah, you can see a few channels becoming quite popular here. So people know that uh, they want to spend some time on their phones watching movies or watching YouTube. So they would know, oh, okay, so I can spend this. Or if they learn out of that, or they know I was watching a lot of YouTube, I don't know what I have to buy. So, yeah. um, when you were sort of looking at starting the business, um, did you do anything around sort of analyzing the, the total market size that you have currently? Like currently, how many people in the so Tanzania has a population of fifty million? Oh yeah, so oh, sort of fifty million. So like, did you kind of say, okay, out of fifty million, we think that this number of people are in a position to use our service? Oh yeah. So, so truthfully, we didn't do like uh, like a scientific research. But we, are, we, we go out, we, we, we look at several factors. So we would look at the number of people who are online and how, many, how much the hut is growing, right? And then we you look at you know, just different aggregated data. Like you could look at a, at a Swahili, uh, every now and then you get kind of Swahili film on YouTube. Right? So you look at that and you'll see how many people are watching that. So you see maybe 500,000 people are watching on YouTube. Uh, maybe a million people have watched it on YouTube. So the data, the data says that there's close to 11 million people who have internet access. So data people actually use the internet every now and then. Uh, uh, but then you see not all of them are going to go to your app. Right? And then you don't expect that our app will go to 11 million people in like a year. So, so this will take time. Right? And then so what we do is trying to reach as many people as we can because we know the market, uh, we can never grow, uh, we cannot exceed the market. We cannot be growing faster than more people are coming online. So you see smartphones, they're selling very fast. People buy smartphones so that they can go online. So as soon as somebody gets a smartphone, first they want to see what, what all this WhatsApp is about, or what this Facebook and Instagram, and then after that, they want to get entertainment on it. They want to see the videos, they want to see the movements, they want to see uh, more. So people, as soon as somebody gets a smartphone, they spend a lot more time with their smartphones than any other type of device they have. Yeah, or family member. Oh well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so they, they just focus on the smartphone. And they want just, they want more. And they want more 
local content content. I see. So, so they're not interested. So I know that uh, I don't watch it, but I know that Game of Thrones, for example, or House of Cards, these are really popular. popular shows. Shows. Yeah. You said that there's not people aren't interested in those shows. Okay, so there are people who are interested in that, but it's a very niche, right? So, for example, me, I have Game of Thrones, right? So that makes sense. And a lot of people who are working in tech, for example, if I go out there in the hub, I would find a lot of people who are working in Game of Thrones, right? But uh, apart from these peers here at work, I can't, there's nobody in my family who watches Game of Thrones, right? So when I go uh, talk to my family, and this is not just the McCross family, my entire extended family. Right? They know nothing about Game of Thrones, and that doesn't make any sense to them. When I go for holidays or just when I go home, we watch for healing films. This is what they, they watch. So it's a very small niche of people who watch foreign films and foreign uh, movies. When you go to the cinema, you would either find the either, either foreigners and Locals who are very well, you know, exposed. They maybe studied abroad, or they at least have a degree and they work at a corporate somewhere. But just somebody from the streets, they they don't relate to that content. They only relate to local, local content. Um, your thirty thousand users. Yeah. How did how did they find you? How did they hear about you? How did they? Uh, yeah, so we initially we we we. we we did a lot of social media campaigning uh, to kick it off, and <laughs> when we started, actually, we didn't, we didn't have enough infrastructure actually, so we, we just paid for server and bandwidth, uh, and then actually, when we did the campaign, initially, you have to do that so that you can you know, get ground, get to find out who you are. But after that, uh, then we just started to grow. People just find it organically in Play Store, and I looked, I looked at what people search for. YouTube, for instance, or when they go to uh, Play Store. So they'll switch, they'll go, go for Swahili, Swahili movies, or Bongo movies. Bongo means uh, Tanzania, it's like a slang for Tanzania films, Tanzania movies, or Swahili. So I targeted that. Right? So I did a little SEO and uh, App Store search optimization. And then gradually we start getting, you know, just organic. Uh, installed. So it reached a point where we actually our server didn't crash because we didn't expect for it to. Yeah, we, we thought it was going to go like really, uh, really slow. So they found Danica. But uh, campaigning is also important, especially on, on Instagram and Facebook. This works very, very well because people are on Instagram mostly, and people love Instagram because of this. There's a lot of local content on Instagram, so when they follow local celebrities, uh, local. They can get their local uh, contents on the on Instagram, and they love it. So when you target them there, they can also find out, hey, and get a lot of films you know, from this app, so they they install. Um, from a technological point, how easy or difficult is it to do an on-demand video service here? Yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's difficult because. Uh, to be honest, it, it costs a lot of money uh, in the infrastructure, right? Uh, to build the platform is not very, you know, the technology, you know, to understand the technology of it is not very difficult. Uh, you can understand that, uh, even if you feel Google now, you can understand exactly how YouTube is built. But the costs of running the infrastructure is high. And then there's the cost of, uh, for example, us, we had to do a lot of customization so that it works here, right, so that it works in the in this market. So a lot of compression of the videos, we have to test with the users to see. There's a lot of compromise between, say, video quality and video file size. Right? So we have to do a lot of research to see how bad can the quality get before they start complaining. Right? Because then people will complain more if it buffers a lot. But if the quality is not very good, because actually they're watching it on the phone, for example. So, te technology wise, it's not difficult, but business wise, to keep it running for a long period of time, it's expensive. That's why we are hustling now to try to find venture, uh, venture funding or enjoy investing. I think, so, yeah. so, how have you funded it up until now? 
uh, we we uh, we did a, we bootstrapped it for a while in the beginning, and then we got a, some seed funding from we got a grant from uh, the Commission of Science and Technology. There is a program, the Innovation Fund, with the Finnish government. So they funded us. So we 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 used that to uh, perfect our technology a little, and then uh, acquire very stage content, the films and some shows, and then we could actually go out and, and see if the users actually love the service and use it. So, so after that, now we have to, so now we are facing growth. I promise. How do we grow and keep funding to become, uh, the goal is to reach, you know, cash flow positive, right? So that's the hassle. Right? Got it. And so do you do the, um, the developments here in Tanzania? Yeah, so it's, it's entirely done here. And so we have built our back end infrastructure, our front end apps. And although it's not hosted here, it's hosted in the United States. So there's a server in Europe. Uh, but the goal is to have a local server as well, so that if it's working, the local server is live, then somebody will just uh, access the content here. Unless it it's down, then they can access it in, in, in Europe. So, so what what are the um, the consequences of having your server in, in Europe? Does it mean that it's it's uh, slower to stream? Yeah, it's a it's a bit slower because it's far. <laughs> yeah, it's by a lot of hops to get to it, and also it's uh, it's also it's also expensive on the data side. Yeah, because then it has to go to the wider internet. So the thing is, if you get the local server here, you can do, uh, you could work with a uh, with your local you know, telcos, and then have like a direct link to to local server. So it's like it's like a VPN. So it's, you can you can you can make it work so that it's, it becomes a lot cheaper for the user to access the content. So it's fast. So it's fundamentally to be uh, yeah, if everything's stored in the same country, it's just going to be a lot quicker and cheaper. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so why hasn't that happened? Uh, it's it's a bit like, expensive. We can deploy our own servers <laughs> because. Deploying your own servers is just expensive. <laughs> That's it. And then it's just easier when you begin to go to uh, like the Amazon Web Services because they already uh, the the average costs for them is really low. So you can't beat that cost in the beginning unless until you have that volumes, then you can commit capital to set up the local servers. And also there is a lot of local. Problems, power outages, you know that. So you, even if we do a local server here, we can still we will still have to keep a backup so that they both work. Yeah. yeah. So it's just expensive. So this is is like what I want to build. Mm -hmm. I haven't built. We haven't finished that. Okay. This is what I want. Yeah. Cool. And how does it work on the the content side of the business? How do you? Um, is it that you? Uh, yeah. How do you get content onto your Platform. Yeah, so the, the content creators, they are looking for ways to do their content. So the, uh, the, the issue is just to strike a perfect deal for both us and them. So, uh, so far, we have not been running long enough to have enough data and projections to figure out what is actually the perfect deal for both of us. So we are still uh, you know, negotiating. We are still uh, like doing a test run, right? So when we talk to different filmmakers, we get a different type of arrangement, all right? So we tell them we're still doing testing, we're still still early stage, yeah. So if they want to commit with us and we do the testing, so uh, it, it, it's just it's different deals. I don't want to go into sure, sure. Yeah. And are these typically independent filmmakers, or are you going to like a a big sort of film? Oh yeah, studio. Yeah. yeah, so they are they are both. <laughs> so they are independent companies that make films. Yeah, so we just signed a contract with the one who made this show, so for TV. So they are already well established. They're a good company. They have a lot of content already. This they make last season three of the show, so it was easy to negotiate with him because he already has a lot of content. When we go to films, now so far we. We have not signed yet with somebody who was um, uh, making an individual film like that because they don't have a lot of content. So it's very difficult to negotiate with them. So if you have one or two films, you're very attached to it. 
and we cannot provide you the value you would want from us yet. So we go to people who like the distributors because they get rights from a lot of intermediate filmmakers and they can make DVDs and they can you know, silence broadcasting. So when we go to them, we can negotiate on bulk, like 100 films or 200 films. So we, it's easier to negotiate with them, at least for now. Uh, in the future, maybe we'll start negotiating with the different makers and see how we can provide value for them. It's important that they, they get you know, good value from the platform. If they don't, then it's not a solution for them. Yeah. So, um, so if, 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 you're looking to, if Tango TV is essentially looking to be um, Netflix for Tanzania, why hasn't Netflix done it? Or what's to stop Netflix just coming in and doing it? I guess uh, Netflix is accessible from here. Okay, so actually, since January, they, they launched the light, so you can get Netflix from anywhere. But as I say, the issue is the type of content that's on Netflix. So, so why don't Netflix come here and acquire local content? Yes, we hoping when they come, we'll be already established and maybe they'll acquire us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it work like that. But you have seen this. Uh, Netflix has, uh, they, I think they make these business decisions, right? So uh, they have to maybe, uh, they are bigger markets. So, for example, if you come out of Africa, they have India to tackle. That's a big opportunity, it's a bigger market. And they don't have, they have not yet captured it fully, right, with Indian films. They have a few Indian films, but it's not there yet. So I think uh, from their thinking, they would rather capture India, right, and then maybe Nigeria if they come to Africa, because Iroko is, I mean, uh, Nollywood is still huge. And there's uh, a Nigerian prayer, like in local TV, which they're doing very well. Uh, but if they come to Africa, maybe they'll look into Nigeria first before they come to Tanzania. And uh, Tanzania, we still have our, our problem with our content. And, and it, for them, they may think it's still a very uh, small market. Right? So I think to work with uh, local content in Tanzania and East Africa, generally, you have to start from the beginning, like us, from, you know, from the bottom, right? so like us, so you can work with it to go up. But if you come from up and then looking for uh, to, uh, to to execute quickly and then capture all the cool content and then capture the Tanzanian market fully, it's gonna be difficult for them than, than for us. Just it's just a feeling. But I mean, they have infinity money. If they come here <laughs> and they decide to solve this problem, I'm sure I'm sure they they can. Yeah, but, and a lot of international players, I'm sure they're looking into this space. So we are we have to keep going until they kill us. <laughs> um, how do you make money? Uh, we, we charge a uh, subscription fee. Uh, so for, the, for the consumer, for yeah. the customer. Yeah. And how much is that? Uh, it's around $4. Per uh, month? Yeah. And do you charge anything on the content side? Or do you have to pay for the content? No, we have to pay for the content. So yeah. We have to pay for the content. And so is it um, that the... The 30,000 users are all paying $4 a month, or is it just the active ones that are paying for it? Uh, no, not all of them. <laughs> yeah, just a few. Yeah. We, we try to get more and more. To, oh, so is it, is it yeah. that somebody can register without paying? Oh, oh yeah, you can register, uh, uh, try. Uh, uh, actually, when we launched uh, in March, we didn't charge anything because we wanted to test, we wanted to get you know, data, user data. So it was free for several months, actually. And then this past month, uh, we are, we, we, this past few weeks, actually, then we are starting to charge. So as I say, well, we are still very early stage. Yeah, correct. Yeah, so, um, yeah. yeah we're still very early stage. But, uh, but people are paying. Yeah, so they're starting to pay. Yeah, but if they, it's not like everybody's just run away. Is it you're clearly no, 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 doing no. something? Yeah. <laughs> um, do you have, like... A particular film or particular TV show that you really, really, really want to get on Tango TV? Is there like a dream show that you're thinking, right, if we get that, then we we'll Locally, it. yeah. Yeah, there is a local show here. It's it's it's, it's not a drama or a, a, a series. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's basically like, what do you call this? Like, American Got Talent. 
Yeah, American Top Gun. Yeah, yeah. like a talent show. Yeah. yeah. Like a, okay. Yeah. It's called Bongo Sausage. So they go. Bongo Sausage. Sausage. Yeah. St- oh, Star. No, it's a Star. It's not, not Sausage. Star. No, sausage. no. <laughs> well, Bongo okay. Star. Bongo Star. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and who won Star Search last last time? Uh, I don't quite remember actually. But it, it's, it's, it's been running for a, for a while. But it's like people go on there, they do juggling, they do dancing, they do. No, so this is just music. Just music. Just music. So it's just same. Yeah. It's been around for, for a while. They go around the country and then they get contestants from like every region and then they come to Dara and they do, uh, sh- uh, they do the, the whole thing here in Dara. Mm-hmm. So you get like 15, I think, around 15, 20 contestants and then people start voting and then until we get to the final. You know. So I think when we get if we get that, it's gonna be huge. And there's also a comedy show here. Uh, it's called it's called the comedy. <laughs> yeah. So the comedy show we we really uh we're working hard to get that both of these shows. Mm-hmm. So we already initiated uh, talks with them. Uh, so they know about us. We're still negotiating, uh, but hopefully, hopefully we'll, we'll get both of these. Shows. Okay. And so just so I can understand it. Um, how are people watching these programs at the moment? So do they have a, a, a TV? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, they have to go. Like, currently? Yeah, currently, currently. Yeah, so they have to watch it on TV. And, but they have to sort of tune in at 8 o'clock exactly, or something. Yeah. So, so if you're watching shows at this time, they have to tune in at exactly time. Um, roughly, how many TVs are there in Tanzania? Oh, uh, several. <laughs> there are several. Uh, so, so is it, is it, there are 50 million people? How yeah. many TVs do you think? Like TV, uh, like, uh, like, like TV screens? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in households. Yeah. Uh, so is, is it that every household has one, or is it? No, 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 no. no, no. So last I checked, it was around nine, nine, uh, nine million. Nine million. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not very current data. Though. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, but I'm, I'm just trying to get. Is it the sort of thing that, um, like, if you're in Dar es Salaam city, is it that most households have a TV? Yeah. Yeah. So in Dar es most households. Okay, and so you, what you're looking to do is try and find those people who are currently tuning in on their TV and saying you can actually just watch this anytime. Yeah, anytime. This means uh, 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 what's a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's not like the bus. It's the, the commuter bus. Oh, okay, yeah, like the menu. Yeah, yeah, the menu bus. So when you're on the bus, you can watch it. Uh, you know, sometimes you're in the office. <laughs> you can tune in and watch. Uh, when the, uh, you're going to bed, people are watching you know, spend some time with their phones. The young generations, they can basically just any time, right? They don't want to talk to their parents in the sitting room, they can just. Yeah. So people spend a lot of time on their, on their smartphones. Mm-hmm. A lot. I mean, if you look at WhatsApp, then you'll know people spend a lot of time there. And is it uh, is it just people's phones that pe- that they're watching the shows on, or do people have tablets? Uh, there was a spike in tablets, but I think it kind of went away. Yeah, not very many people have tablets because as, when they have smartphones, it's set, it basically just sets the tablets. If they want bigger device, they will most likely just get a laptop. Okay. Yeah. So the tablets, uh, the kind of phase to me. Yeah. yeah. Smartphones are huge. Yeah. Um, so we'll just do a few more questions, if that's okay. Um, when you look forward in the next sort of three years, what do you think Tango TV might look like? Uh, well, I want to I wanna capture the East Africa. Yeah. Just Rwanda, Uganda, Kenya. <laughs> I want to do that. It's very exciting when I think of, uh, of doing this. And we're also looking to start making... Hopefully, make a, an original, you know, start making original content. Uh, uh, we like that, although there are films, there are shows, we still like shows that really capture the culture. You know, like you talk Game, Game of Thrones, for instance, something phenomenal that everybody wants to see. So, I really would love to have a hand in making something like that. And it has to, to be able to, to relate to people across the region. So Tanzanians, Kenyans, Ugandans, it's a, they're very different cultures. That's why you can find, you know, every every single one of these countries have their own celebrities, like their own music and their own musicians and films. 
and I, I, I still feel like it's possible to, to, to create something that can uh, interest all these uh, countries and then just drive people to the platform so that they can see this show. Something huge, something like that. So, so you're seeing it uh, at the moment, is it just in Tanzania or is it being used elsewhere? Uh, most of the users are from Tanzania. Like most. But yeah. We get a few download, downloads, Kenya, Uganda, even the US, mm-hmm. Europe. Yeah, but mostly here. But when you, when you think of going regionally, um, I mean, in, in Kenya they also speak Swahili, but in, do they speak Swahili in Rwanda and Uganda? Uh, Uganda a little, but Rwanda. Uh, not very much. Not very so, much, yeah. will you have to be, so in Rwanda, in Kenya, Rwanda is the local language? Yeah, yeah. Does that mean that you're, I don't think, is it actually possible to scale a local language based on? Uh, yeah, then we have to look further than just Swahili. All right, so we have to look further than just Swahili. I think language is not very much, language is the biggest driver, for example. Okay, people would watch Swahili because they can understand it. But I think mostly it's how the content relates to them. Their environment. Uh, so, uh, mostly when my family, uh, when I got my, I watched say, The Dark Knight, right? This is not getting it. Uh, it's just like, uh, it's just, oh, it's yeah. Like, as in, even if they were speaking Swahili, they wouldn't get it. Is that, yeah. is that what you mean? Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. Right? So, it's just, it's just the content has to re- relate to them, right? So, the whole thing with the dragons, and it's just very far <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, it's so obviously Marvel. Uh, Iron Man, uh, Captain America, it just doesn't relate very much with a, a, a typical, yes. So you're so saying that, in, if I got this right, you're saying that you do a locally, a local Swahili produced program here and then um, show it in, let's say, Rwanda. And even if you had subtitles, the fact yeah. that they couldn't understand that. Or something. So just it. something that can. Relates to them, relates to the entire region. Yeah. So I don't know what that is. What could it be? Like a political drama, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that's just something. Look at Marco Foy, for example. When he came, became the president of Tanzania, he was like a phenomenon across uh, the East African region. Right? So you see Kenyans tweeting, what would Marco Foy do, for instance? That was a hashtag that became quite popular. <laughs> so I think it's also possible to come up with uh, just. A show or something that can just go around the entire region. Yeah. Yeah, it's, if you get talented people, give them enough of budget, they can figure it out. Awesome. Yeah. And, uh, and how, how can people listening at home either follow the journey of Tango TV or, or download the app? Yeah, yeah, so they can download the app on, on the Play Store. Yeah. If you just search Tango Movies, you can find it. Yeah, we have a Facebook page, you can uh, like us on Facebook. Yeah. And the Twitter page as well. So just Tango TV, TZ. Yeah. <laughs> cool, well, Victor, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Before we head, just a quick moment to say thank you for listening. You can see the show notes of this episode by heading to samfloor.com forward slash podcast and then searching for the episode title. That's S A M F L O Y dot com forward slash podcast. Now, a few people have got in touch and have been asking about how this podcast came about. And well, it all started when I took a one-way flight to Rwanda to seek out business opportunities across the region. I'm now at the stage of formulating a bit of a plan of the business I want to go into based on all of these podcast interviews, and we'll be keeping a record of what I get up to on my blog. And so if you're interested in being kept in the loop, you can sign up to the newsletter there. Again, it's samfloy.com. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback about the podcast, or indeed anything, please feel free to email me, podcast at samfloy.com, and I'd be very happy to chat. In any case, have a great week and speak to you soon.